Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here and let's resume our 2022 Complete Beginner's Guide to Darkest Dungeon. We're filling out our roster and we need to start making some changes to our party composition uh, because we have uh, obviously a incredibly stressed out herbalist Dismas and even um, our Vestal are also uh, getting a little bit north of a stress threshold that I'm comfortable with however we did get some jesters and so I think it might be worth uh, putting a jester in our party with these two characters that are at three stress to kind of talk about how you might remedy stress within the dungeon without spending money. Because we did mention that, yes, I could go to the Abbey and do stress relief. And if you want to do that, it's totally fine. Let me just say up front, it's totally fine. It just costs money. But in reality, there is no time limit on the game if you're playing on regular difficulty level. And what that means is, all it would take is just more grinding for you to get money again uh, to make up what you lost. And if you don't mind grinding away like that and, you know, making the game take a little bit longer so you can just use these facilities for that, then, then you're totally good. That's fine. Um, I like just moving at a bit of a quicker clip and saving my money for the blacksmith and the guild, personally. Um, but at the same time, in my Let's Play, before I figured that out, you'll see that I was doing that all the time until other players kind of advised me against that. Now, once we can unlock a district, there are two districts that we're going to be rushing to get. One is the bank, which will give us 5% interest on the money that we have every week. So you can start building compound interest and just amass a fortune with the bank and your money problems are pretty much going to be solved if you can control your spending and pile on and capitalize on that compound interest over time so that'll help with money and then there's another district that's called the puppet theater that you can make that allows people who are not going into the dungeon to um passively heal an amount of stress every week and what that means is as long as you keep people out of the rotation for long enough they will um, de-stress without spending money, uh, and it's fantastic, but we're not there yet. Like, you have to build up to that point. So, in the meantime, let's talk about using gestures, uh, you know, to heal stress and what that might look like. So, let's go to the Embark screen and pick ourselves a mission. Now, you'll notice that the wield opened up. So, right here... We have another of the main dungeon branches open. And remember, we're not doing the, cart the courtyard or the farmstead. Uh, these are the DLC branches. We're leaving those uh, by the wayside for uh, quite some time. And the ruins, you'll see that we are 50% of the way toward the boss. You'll notice that there's a level, there's like a number one that has appeared beneath um, or in the mouth of this skull by the ruins. And this is like effectively your level within that dungeon so once you like top level for example is seven like once you've beat all the bosses in that area it'll go have gone all the way up till seven uh so we have a long way to go to clear all these places out now we have four quests at our disposal that i'm thinking about that are um all apprentice level quests right and we could go to the wield if we wanted to or we could go to the ruins and do these quests now um it is probably worth saying that I'm not going to spoil it for you, but you'll pick it up over time. The wield has different enemies um, than the ruins, as does the cove and the warrens. And because of that, different party members, different consumables, different skills, different uh, loadouts are more favorable. So we're going to stick to the ruins just because we understand it for now, uh, and it's undead. Like, we know that we're basically getting cultists, which are humanoid, undead, and some brigands, which are humans. So those are the kinds of enemies that we're going to be fighting. 
in here for the most part until we get to the boss. So let's stick with what we know. But if you want to venture into the wheel, it's fine too. And let's think about what would be the most desirable of these missions for us to do. So this one is a room battle. It's a skirmish. And they are offering deeds. And this one gives portraits and it's a scout. Um, this agility whistle, uh, whatever, it's fine. Um, it's a low level, you know, trinket. You could just sell it if you wanted. But I am going to do this one because we're looking for deeds specifically. All right. And it's a room battle quest, which means that we need to clear out all of the room battles to get it done. And so what we're going to do is just drag away some of the members of the group that we don't want to use. All right, so I'm actually going to put our Vestal in the back row, and I'm going to slot in uh, this first Jester Poignant, and then I'm going to make a decision on do I want to take my level 1 healer with me or do I want to bring in my new healer? And actually what I'm going to do is take um, Lady Heals out and bring in another healer who is level zero. What we're doing here is we're just kind of leveling up our entire roster because you don't want to put all of your eggs in one basket. You want to kind of be in the practice of rotating. And I think I explained this to you guys before, but... We don't have to worry about it now, but at a certain point, higher level quests will open up, and they are um, better done by people who are higher level, but what happens to the higher level people is they will eventually refuse to do an apprentice quest because they think it's beneath them. They don't think it's strong enough. So the game kind of has built in um, a mechanism to prevent you from rolling on early content and just, you know, scumming up easy experience and gold, uh, which is really, really nasty of it. It's brutal because you never get that satisfying edge of just dominating um, sections that were challenging before with your leveled up people. But you start, you start to get that over time when you have better trinkets uh, and better knowledge of the game, you will get that feeling of, like, I have a powerful party, but it takes a while, and that's part of Darkest Dungeon, is that, like, you just aren't going to feel like you have an edge, ever. Um, and you just have to just put that aside. And because of that, you need to have as many people as possible who are able to kind of go into the dungeon and substitute for each other. So I'm going to kind of be distributing the experience if I can. Another nice thing about doing this is that it'll put us with only one person at three stress bars as opposed to two. And the Jester can easily do that with one character. With two, it becomes more difficult to kind of deal with two people who are getting super stressed out until our Jester gets some better trinkets to help um, amplify their stress reduction skills. But I'm happy with this party for the moment, okay? I am going to take Dismiss to show you the stress healing, and I am going to take Reynold, even though they're, le they're both, like, you know, level one. I'm okay with this. The advantage of getting people higher level and doing some of the more difficult missions, of course, is that the rewards are higher. So you'll get money faster and things like that, uh, but they're more challenging. All right, so now that we have our party set, I'm going to go back to the Hamlet, pushing escape, and we're going to go over here, um, and we are going to click up in the upper right. There is a button that, there's four buttons at the top of the party screen to let you sort your characters, and we're going to click the house to say sort by activity, and this will kind of put all of the people who are doing who are in the party for the mission on the top so you can easily see them and then we're going to go into the um the guild and from the guild i'm going to take my jester over here and i'm going to make sure that my jester has a stress heal right and they don't so they don't have inspiring tune right now so i need to pay a thousand to learn this so the question is do i want to pay a thousand to learn it or do i want to cheapen it a little bit um, and I am going to just click training regimen and make Songs this more fall, affordable. But their knowledge lives on. That's right. 
So uh, we're going to now pay 900 and learn Inspiring Tune. So it's giving us the tooltip tutorial screen that says heroes can only have four active combat skills at a time. Toggle the skills on and off to change your loadout and watch how it changes that hero's positional strength in the display above. So the preferred position indicator uh, that we talked about is dynamic, all right? and reflects what four abilities you have loaded. Um, I am okay with Harvest. I'm okay with Finale. I'm um, not thrilled about Solo. Slice Off is okay, but I'm actually going to learn Dirk Stab. I like this ability better. And see, you can see how quickly this cost uh, is adding up. We just had to pay 1800 to learn these skills. So that's why, you know, your money is kind of uh, difficult to come by at the beginning of the game. I'm going to right-click on my Jester, and we're going to rename this guy, by the way. Um, you know, and this is going to be like, you know, Bob Dylan, because, you know, his music is super helpful if you're stressed out. I'm kidding. All right, so we're going to turn off slice off by left clicking on it and turn on inspiring tune and i'm also going to turn off solo and i'm going to turn on dirk stab and i'm going to go with these four abilities i like these just fine now you'll see that the preferred position indicators have changed somewhat and the gesture is good to go in the third slot where we have them where bob dylan is positioned uh, fantastic. Okay, we're going to close this screen. I am going to go here, and I'm going to click on the other healer and see what she's got. She has Judgment, which we want, Dazzling Light, which we want, Divine Grace, which we want, but Illumination we don't really want. We want um, the Party Heal, so I have to pay for that. Uh, and already we've saved 300 by discounting it by 10%, so that's coming in handy. And we're going to right-click on her, and I'm going to turn off Illumination and turn on Party Heal. These four skills, by the way, are basically the four skills I roll with the entire game when I have just one Vestal in the party, or even two. Like, these are my favorites. You get this, you get a, a self-heal, damage-dealing ability with Judgment. And the beautiful thing about Judgment is that you'll notice it hits every target, every every position for the enemy. So if, as long as she's in position three or four, she can hit any enemy with judgment. It's fantastic. Um, and then Dazzling Light um, almost hits everything except the back row, and it stuns. And then you have a, a, an individual target heal and a party heal. So I really like these abilities. Uh, we're going to rename her... Um, you know patch me up so she is uh patch me up is a wonderful healer we're not worrying about the camping skills at the moment we're going on a short mission anyway so we don't even camp it's fine and we are going to uh, we can take a look at what she's got like she's got slow draw which means she's just basically going to go last on the first round which is a bummer but she's sweet against Unholy, which is what we're going to be dealing with in the Ruins. And she's good against Humans, which is also what we're going to be dealing with in the Ruins. Unfortunately, these are like mostly damage abilities, which we don't really care about her damage too much. Uh, but, you know, she does have a minus 15% stress, so that's good. All right. Um, now we're going to close out of this screen... Um, actually, I'm going to go back to the guild. I'm going to make sure Reynold has what we want. I am going to learn um, Holy Lance with Reynold uh, because it's one of my favorite abilities. And Reynold is level one. So this is where you can start to really flex your muscles and level up his abilities and have them do more, right? So Smite, which is doing 15% damage versus Unholy, if we level it up, you can see it does 20% plus damage gives a crit and is more accurate so we're going to level up all of the abilities of his that we learn or that we're going to use basically keeping an eye on our money like we don't want to go bankrupt this is a very important part of the game let me say this to you do not spend all your money before you provision so what that means is like when you go into the dungeon you need to buy supplies you need to buy food and torches so don't spend everything in the hamlet and then realize oh god i can't afford torches or food that's a bad spot to be in you can of course in an emergency sell off trinkets to get some money um but make sure you save yourself 
uh, a few thousand. Like I would like to have at least four thousand uh, to to make sure I can buy everything I want. So just be mindful of that. I'm gonna level up Smite. I'm gonna level up Zealous Accusation. I'm gonna level up Stunning Blow. Um, and I could level this up. I could. But the chances that he's going to, at the moment, get back into position three or four is is pretty unlikely. So I'm going to leave that one and save a little bit of money for later when money is less of an object um, or, you know, a bottleneck. I'm going to go over to Dismiss, and let's level up Dismiss. First of all, um, I want to immediately learn Duelist Advance because it's a fantastic ability. I would also like to learn Point Blank Shot. So I'm going to then level up the abilities that I like, which would be um, Duelist Advance, okay? Point Blank Shot, Pistol Shot, and Grape Shot Blast. Now, why did I level up those? All right, so Duelist Advance is an ability. We're having Dismiss right now in the second position. This has forward one, so he uses this, and he, like, lunges forward. He moves forward one and switches places with whoever is in position one. Or really, he just moves up. It's not with whoever's in position one. It's just in this example. What he does is he moves up one, and whoever is in front of him in that position swaps with him. So if he's in position three, then he swaps with whoever's in position two. If he's in position one, he can't move forward anymore. He just stays there. Um, but this lets you move forward one, and then it puts this ability on him called Repost, which is a counterattack. And so he gets these stacks of Repost on himself. Um, actually, uh, that's Darkest Dungeon too. These aren't stacks. This is just he has Repost until the uh, it wears off, basically. Like, he gets this ability called Repost on him, and he has it, and anytime somebody attacks him, he gets to counterattack. It doesn't do as much damage, but um, it's amazing. Then he has point blank shot, which he can only use from position one, but it will move him backward one. So you can like move him forward and then shoot and move back. And this ability, look at this, it's it, it only hits whoever's in position one. So it stinks if there's nobody there, like if there's a body there or something like that. But in general, there's usually a, somebody there. This does 50% extra damage and has 6% crit and can knock the enemy back. So it's terrific, all right? So I like it a lot. And then, of course, we've got um, Grape Shot Blast to do some AoE to the first three targets, which pairs nicely with Reynolds, um, you know, Zealous Accusation. And then we have Pistol Shot, which as long as Dismiss is in two, he can hit everybody except the first position. So this is good. All right. Um, and... I know uh, Open Vein is a very good ability, and you need to, at some point, start making a decision on, do you want Dismiss to be, like, or any high women you have, do you want them to be more ranged attack, or more melee attack, or what I'm doing, which is kind of like a hybrid between the two, and I'm doing a hybrid. This is a great ability for bleeding, by the way. It puts a bleed on, but we're going into the ruins, and the ruins has a lot of undead that you can't bleed. So this is not something that I want to equip in the unde in the uh, ruins. Okay, and now we're done at the guild, and we can go to the blacksmith, um, and you can see that nobody can be leveled up because we don't have weaponsmithing. We need deeds to do that, and that's going to be one of our biggest priorities, getting better weapons and better armor as soon as we possibly can. So we're good to go. Let's go into the dungeon. All right, so now that we're all set, we've got our party in position. Let's just check our trinkets really fast. Is there any, are there any trinkets that we want to use? This is only for a Plague Doctor. This is only for a Flagellant. Um, and this really isn't very good. So no, we're going to go back here. We're going to make sure we have the, see, you notice how it selected the Farbstead mission. You always have to be sure that you're on the right mission. Because even if you have it selected, when you go back to the Hamlet, it might change whatever mission you have selected um so be aware like double check like i did before when i didn't get the right mission and i didn't get the one that had deeds okay we're on deeds we're on the skirmish it's an apprentice level in the ruins good let's provision okay so pay attention i have 5500 money let's see how many how much money we spend just um 
getting ourselves supplies for this mission, okay? I'm going to buy just a little bit more food. And we need at least two shovels. I'd like two keys. Look at that. We've already spent 3,000. Um, and I'm actually okay with spending just that much money and not anymore. This is fine. But you see how, you know, 4,000 is kind of like my cutout, my cutoff. I could take another shovel, some more food, maybe even more torches, but the money just starts to add up. So we're good to go. Now, notice here that the uh, tip that they're saying that skeletons with high protection are susceptible to blight attacks. And this is uh, a great tip. Because what they're basically saying is that, like, blight is very, very good against the undead. They are susceptible to blight, but like we talked about, not bleed. So if you have characters that do blight damage, Plague Doctor, etc., this is a great place to come and do that. So the as... Must be driven back. And what better place to begin than the seat of our noble line? Sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut off the narrator there. As you get a more filled out party, you're going to have better and better options with better trinkets, better skills, better characters to fully take advantage of the environment that you're in. We don't have that luxury. We're still really early in the game. So we just roll in with um, characters that are strong and do our best. All right. So we got into a battle right off the bat. Now, this is a battle with two maggots and a spitter. All of these enemies are rather weak and do not leave corpses, but you want to kill them as fast as possible, and they are nimble, unfortunately. So I am going to... Uh, I forgot to... I have to change my loadout. I need to put in uh, the skills that I want, but I'm going to go ahead and Grape Shot Blast these guys uh, like that. Ouch. Five damage and Blighted. All right, so we got hit for five. We got blighted, which means uh, we're taking one damage every two rounds, and that's unfortunate. Now, what we can do is... We could Inspiring Tune to reduce Dismiss's stress, but I'm not going to do it right now because we didn't surprise these enemies, and these two maggots still get to go. So I'm actually going to Harvest... Harvest is a great ability that Jester has that puts a bleed on, and you can see that these enemies can be bled. They're living. So if I do this, um, we're going to outright kill one maggot, and we put a bleed on that will kill that spitter next round. Now that's really unfortunate. So that guy got a crit on us, you know, for no good reason. A maggot critted us, and you can see that that really stressed out Dismas. Uh, so we did not need that to happen, and yet it has happened. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to heal up the Jester, and we're going to try to just chill out and um, wait and see if it can come back around to the Jester so that we can stress heal Dismas before this battle ends. It's unlikely, but I want to try. Um, I'm going to uh, just bulwark um, and mark myself whatever as the light gains purchase spirits are lifted and purpose is made clear all right i'm gonna open vein this guy that should de-stress him it did it de-stressed everybody actually which is fantastic we're going to heal here again i'm stalling just so i can try to use my ability um which we got and then we're going to inspiring tune here the maggot will get to attack us most probably um but watch boom and we healed eight stress. Yeah, so it's gonna nibble the Jester. Uh, the Jester takes four and takes a little stress damage, unfortunately, but we win. All right, now, what I'm doing right there, which is stalling so that I can use my restorative abilities, is something that you can get away with sometimes, especially early in the game when it's not as hard, but you don't want to protract battles too long because the game will start to punish you for it uh, and specifically in some cases horrible things can happen uh, as the turn counter increases so it's more explicit in darkest dungeon 2 but 
overall, you need to make a decision on, do I want to make the battle longer so I can get off some heals because I can't do them out of combat? Or do I want to get out of combat so that I don't take any more crits or, you know, have anything bad happen? Be gone, fiend. In this case, I was fine with letting it happen. And we kind of, you know, because he took that crit, we ended up where we started with the stress. But if we didn't have the Jester, you know, we would be in much worse position with Dismiss already. Like, we just walked in here. He was at three. He got crit. He went all the way up to five. And you could see how quickly things can snowball. We're not going to mess with that Iron Maiden. We're going to go through. We're going to light that torch. We're going to open this door. A blazing star is born. Okay, we got the room battle with the chest. We surprised them. Perfect. All right. So I'm not sure we talked about the madman yet, but he's right here. This guy has to die first. Even before the the bone courtier, unfortunately, these guys are both stress damage dealers, but this dude um, hits everybody and is an absolute pain. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I can harvest, but I won't be able to bleed the skeleton, but I will be able to bleed the madman. So instead, I'm going to um, Dirk stab the madman. Okay. And now that switches me with Dismas. Um, but that's okay because what I'm going to do is just shoot the madman. He's almost dead. And let's see if she can judge the madman. Got him. As the fiend falls. Faint hope blossoms. Okay, so we did kill the madman. Now we're going to do a stun. We can't reach this guy, unfortunately. Um, the, the Crusader actually has no real good abilities for hitting anything beyond the first two targets, unfortunately. Except for Iron Swan, perhaps, but that has a lot of setup that we have to do. So I'm going to just um, smite this guy. Almost killed him. All right, so he's going to attempt, but we dodged, which is huge. We dodged, we dodged. Fantastic. All right, so, of course, the courtier gets to go again before we do, because this enemy is incredibly fast. You can see their speed is eight. Our speed is four, you know? That's just kind of how that plays out. All right, so... What do we want to do? I'm going to try to stun this creature. And we did. Is lit. The path is clear. We require only the strength to follow it. Um, what do I want to do right now? Now, Finale does a bunch of damage, but it pushes the Jester back, which is okay. I actually kind of want the Jester to go back. So who do we want to damage? I'm going to hit this guy, okay? And you see the gesture goes to the back row. Now, why did I do that? Because I have AoE, so I'm going to Grape Shot Blast. Oof. Well, I did have AoE somewhere. I'm going to Zealous Accusation, and we'll at least kill the one skeleton. Okay, good dodge. And here we go. Now, that enemy, they wanted to go first so badly, but we stunned them. Everybody is hurt, so let's go ahead and party heal. We're going to use Divine Comfort to heal the whole party. We heal everybody a little bit. And then Dismas can go ahead um, and just... Uh, let's just try to kill this dude. Got him. Give them no quarter. And we're going to Dirk Stab this guy. Hopefully kill him. He still has an action left. Darn. That's Darkest Dungeon, baby. All right, hit him. There we go. Formation is broken. Okay, tremendous. We wanted deeds, and we got two more. This is great. All right, um, so let's open up the chest. We have the keys, uh, so I am going to use one right here. And we got a shovel and some gems. Great. Now, I'm going to quickly click on Dismas, and I'm going to uh, right-click him because I don't want tracking shot. I want point-blank shot, and I don't want open vein. I want duelist advance. 
So now we have the abilities uh, equipped with him that I want, and I'm going to go into Reynold, and I'm going to turn this off and turn that on. And then let me just make sure she's set. Okay, patch me up is all good. And the Jester is properly loaded out. Okay, fantastic. So now um, we're all ready. Let's see if we get a scout. Ooh, we do. This is terrific. So this will allow us... Ah, darn. I was going to say we could skip this, but nope, there's a room battle. So we have to go up here. We're going to get into a hallway fight, and we're going to have a room battle as we move up there, which is fine. And then we'll turn around and come back through the rest. And hopefully we won't have to do the entire uh, dungeon so that we can get out uh, and get back to the hamlet and make progress there, but we'll see. Okay, so we're going to get a couple of curios before the fight. A torch is terrific. You can always take this. Glittering it's either going to be empty. Trinkets and baubles. Paid for in blood. Indeed. Uh, or have a torch, which we got a torch. Here's a bag. You can always get this. And, oh, we got a thousand gold. Reward. A task well performed. How about that? Now we still surprise them because we're at 76. We're still at that benefit level where we're getting a little extra torch. Uh, we're getting the full benefit of four torch levels because we haven't quite dipped. Now we can just push T right now and light up to full. The path is clear. We require only the strength to follow it. Indeed. All right. So. Um, what we're going to do is, I'm not going to Inspiring Tune right now, because this miss is in, in the worst shape, and none of these guys really do stress damage unless they critically hit us. These are all just bone rabbles. They just want to hit us with their bloody clubs. So what we are going to do is just kind of take them down and see if we can get a second turn where there's only one of them up and hopefully stunned so we can sneak in an Inspiring Tune. So I'm just going to go ahead and stab this guy. Remember, we can't really bleed them, unfortunately. Uh, I'll blast like that. The fiend falls, a faint hope and we blossoms. will accu do that, and yeah, they all die. So, well, you know, sometimes it works out. My goodness, 2,000 money. This momentum. Push on to the task's end. And again, you know, you could try to squeak that out to decrease his stress, but... Uh, I like to take easy victories if possible because whenever you get greedy in this game you get punished. Now after that battle you'll see that our jester has moved up. We need to um, push this teal uh, cycling arrow button to shuffle the party back to the order that we would prefer like this and we're just going to look at the map and we're good. No more fights until this room. The torch is good enough. Don't need to relight it. We go in boom all right okay so this is one where we have two jerks back here that need to go so i'm going to attempt to stab this guy uh, we almost got him and mm, how do i want to do this i'm going to just try to shoot this guy because i don't want to mess around the yep, offensive. and now check it out. They're going to target the most stressed guy with the stress... Oh, no, they targeted the Jester, actually, which is great. He is not the most stressed. He's actually second stressed. You know, Dismas got that crit, killed the guy, de-stressed himself. Now, actually, patch me up. The Vestal is the most stressed, so... Interesting how fortunes come and go. All right, so they have all acted, so it's up to our Vestal, and what do we want to do here? I think, honestly, I'm going to judge uh, the courtier in the back to heal the Vestal and do some damage so that we might clean this guy out more easily next turn. Uh, I'm going to try to just kill this Bone Rabble. I think we would have if we wouldn't have missed, but c'est la vie, you know? Um, I'm actually going to finale. This is kind of like a big swing, but if we do this on this guy, Confidence we'll kill him. The enemy and even though, um, notice how when you do finale, it puts a debuff on the gesture, which says minus 25 dodge, minus three speed, and 100% stress for, a, uh, for the battle. Um, and so that's bad. And you generally want to do that at the end of the fight so it wears off. But in that case, I just wanted to kill that guy so quickly that 
I went ahead and did that. We're going to stun this guy. And um, it's our turn now, so we will just try to slice this guy up. And I'm going to smite this guy. Here we go. Another abomination cleansed from so now, our lands. Uh, hopefully what ends up happening is... Now, we can't stun this guy. His stun resist is going to be a little bit too high for us. So I'm just going to single heal the Jester because he's a bit hurt. Sedated. Dismiss can point blank shot. Now, here's a question. Do I want to point blank shot the corpse? It's my only choice. Or do I want to move... And there's really no reason to not just take this down and push him back. The only thing would be he does have the repost, so maybe you keep him in the front to take the hit or be more likely to take the hit. But to be honest, what this now does is it allows us to... Um, ah, we killed him. I was going to say it allows us to stun him and then get in some more stuff, but that's just fine. All right, so we got a couple of deeds and we got a ruby, so this is great. And whoa, we lucked out big time. Look at that. Um, I mean, I'm going to show you the map. The, because skirmish is just room battles, there was only one room battle. Like, we got so lucky that none of these have a room battle. So what that means is we can just leave. Um, now, we can interact with this, okay? And it's an ornate sarcophagus it's slightly ajar all right uh and do we want to use a curio on it well check this out we're going to i'm going to shuffle back to regular party order now one thing we could do here in this spot is go around trying to find battles to de-stress the vestal uh with the jester's ability but we ended up actually having dismiss be at less stress than he started and nobody's like at a debilitating level so instead of compounding my stress problems by getting into a difficult situation and actually doing more harm than good which is possible like th there is an outcome where i get into a fight i'm able to use inspiring tune and reduce our overall stress beautifully but i think that it's too high of a risk instead what we're going to do is this we're going to control shift and turn out the torch Darkness closes in and now haunting the hearts of men Right, Haunting the Hearts. We're going to use Raynal to interact with this sarcophagus. It is in a position where um, Raynal has no stress. So if anything bad happens, uh, we should be okay. What we can do is just eat a bunch of food with him so he doesn't die, which he wouldn't anyway, because uh, we don't need anything anymore. And we're at zero torch. I'm going to interact with this. Now, let's just do an experiment on Curios. We're not going to use what we know works. Okay, I'm going to consolidate those torches. We're going to just show you what it would be like to do a tried experiment. So I'm going to use the holy water on the sarcophagus, and it says it had no effect. So we can try um, some of the other curios to see if there's anything at all that we can do to make this interaction less painful for us. And I'm going to tell you, not to be a spoiler, but sometimes there is really nothing. There is no magical item for it. Um, it's just going to be a random role whether or not you get a, a benefit or um, a detriment so uh, like I'll try to use the herbs nope now my guess would be it's either going to be the shovel or the key you know um, but we could try to use a torch it's like nope we could try to use a key nope we could try to use a shovel no so now we know um, none of those things are what we need so we're just going to open it Hidden treasures. Aw. All we got is 750 gold, but that's okay. We're going to click this and go home. We're out. Room by room. Hall by hall. We reclaim what is ours. Boom. So, what did we get? Um, we ended up getting... We're selling back all of our items, and so we ended up making 3,000 plus 7,000, so we ended up, like, with 10,645 gold, which is... Uh, a huge amount of money, very good for us. Plus, we collected four deeds, plus these three, so we got seven deeds. So, uh, we are thrilled about that. And, oh my gosh, resolve level up. Heroes gain resolve experience, which is basically their level. 
Uh, for each successful quest, resolve experience in turn determines the hero's resolve level. This represents the hero's veteranship and directly acts as stress resistance against the horrors encountered in the dungeon. So, yes, this is true. People with more resolve level are less affected by the stress, like they have more experience. Um, a low-level resolve that tries a higher-level quest will quickly crumble under the unimaginable stresses. So what this means is, like, you could take a level zero, a level zero resolve character on a more difficult quest, but they are going to get punished by the stress. So it's better to work them up. Now, what we've done, um, unfortunately, um, we got this negative quirk, but we got two resolve experience, and I want you to also pay attention. It's not like you get experience by doing battles. There's no really extra incentive for doing battles except that they give you rewards and that there is the benefit for maybe healing or doing some other stuff in the battle. But there is an extra experience that you gain from them. You just get a, an amount for doing a quest. And so we did it. Raynal and Dismiss are now level 2. And Patch Me Up and Bob Dylan went to level 1. And we're going to return to town. paid dearly for her freedom and deserves better than this place okay then now i do want to call attention to the fact that uh what they're telling us right now is that um this hero is now available to us which is the shield breaker um or the shield bearer i believe uh and so if we go to the stagecoach um she can now be recruited and she's fantastic, but we'll deal with her detriments when we get her. But right now, we're just going to take a Grave Robber, an Air Ballist, and a Highwayman and be happy about it. So you'll notice that Plague Lady and Lady Heels relieve some stress by being in the Hamlet and not in the dungeon. And what that means is, basically, you get five stress relief when idle in town if you, um, each week. It goes up to plus 10 to 15 if you have the puppet theater. So you get some without the puppet theater. So this is, again, a reason why you want to rotate people. Even without the puppet theater, you are healing a small modicum of stress. Now, with somebody like this, you know, who's really stressed, it's going to take forever for that to wear off and, and too long. But we're going to take all of these people. To those with a keen eye. And our roster is now full. Like a dagger's point. And look what we've done. We've unlocked the sanitarium. And the sanitarium is most often used to remove negative quirks and treat diseases, but you can also use it to reinforce a positive quirk, which will lock it into place and prevent new quirks from displacing it. So if you have a quirk that you really like, you can lock it in place. Um, and you can also remove a really, really bad quirk, which we're going to do in a moment. So I'll show you. Reynold um, needs to go here, and I want to get rid of Kleptomaniac because it's just a painful thing to have, but you can see how expensive this is. Uh, I'm going to do it anyway. And the survivalist At home is the campsite. Places, she is a stalwart survivor and a strict instructor. So what you can do here with the survivalist is like take Dismiss and, for example, and you can learn all of their different skills for when camping out. So similar to your skills, you can only have four campfire skills online at a time um, and so you can come here and learn the ones that you would like like for example encourage is fantastic and we want to learn this but not now they're very expensive once we're ready for that right now we want to Im improve weapons and skills that's our priority um, so we're going to go speaking of that go to the blacksmith and see if we can level up and we want to improve our weapons bam and we did. So now we can, for example, take Dismiss over here and upgrade his weapon. And you'll see that uh, it increases his damage, his crit base um, goes up as well, and his speed stays the same. And we're going to do it. And the reason I picked weapons before armor is you're going to get them both um, it, eventually. We just need a few crests and deeds. It's no problem. But the way I view it is the faster they're dead, the less damage we'll take. So I want to just have a little edge um with our offense all right so um we're gonna prepare and gear up for our next 
embarking. But for now, this is a good place to end the episode. We have finished our roster. We have unlocked um, now the sanitarium and the uh, survivalist. So the full Hamlet uh, almost is up to um, is available to us. Uh, we don't have the districts unlocked yet, of course. But we now can do a, a whole bunch of things to relieve stress, to get rid of negative quirks, cure diseases, level up our skills, level up our equipment, buy, and, uh, buy trinkets, and get camping skills. Uh, and we're doing very, very well indeed. We're back up to 10,000 gold and we're ready to roll. Everyone, I hope you're finding this video series to be helpful and easing you into the game and helping you understand what the game flow is like and the game loop as you get more characters and cycle through the dungeon. Please post any questions you have in the comments below and I'd love to help you out. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.